Most of us might know that in the primitive society, currency was not the means of buying and selling things. Goods were bought and sold for other goods and services. For example, a hairdresser might exchange rice for the service that he is giving, or a milkman can exchange his milk with a carpenter for a wooden chair. In those good old days, this is how people traded with each other. This was called the barter system. However, this system had certain difficulties that made the rise of coins and currencies. Welcome to the Saga Rao channel friends, let's talk about money. This video will explain you the difficulties in the barter system, types of money, functions of money, paper money and its limitations and what qualities should good money have. The biggest problem with the barter system was that it lacked common measure of value. It means it was difficult to compare to commodities. Say for example you have 2 liters of milk to sell. In such a case as a person you won't be able to make out if that 2 liters of milk is equal to 2 kgs of onion or 5 kgs of potato worth a massage service or what. Because of such things, it was difficult to calculate the value of the goods exchanged. An other problem with the barter system was of double coincidence of wants. Say a person produces rice and wants wheat in exchange. But the person producing wheat wants milk in exchange because he doesn't eat rice. In such a situation, person A will never be able to purchase wheat and no trade would exist between them. Storage problems were another difficulty. Some goods are highly perishable in nature. Goods like milk, fish or vegetables do not have durability. Plus, they need to be stored carefully which meant additional cost. This made trading pretty difficult. In barter system, you had to buy things as a whole. This means a cobbler's service might not be valued the same by a hairdresser in exchange for his sallow services. But he cannot give him a half haircut, right? Hence, there existed problems of divisibility in the barter system. Last but not the least, providing payments in the future were also difficult. This means that a person may want cow in return for the food that he is selling. The buyer may tell him that he is willing to give the cow to him after two months. However, in those two months, the cow might get sick and may lose its milk giving capacity. This may serve as a problem for the person who has given food in exchange of the cow. Hence, future payments or deferred payments as they call it in economics were also one of the problems in the barter system. Before moving on to the types of money, let us first define what money is. Professor F. A. Walker defines money as money is what money does, whereas Professor Crother defines money as Money is anything that is generally accepted as a means of exchange by the people. Money also acts as a measure and store of value. What both these economists are trying to tell us in simple language is that anything, literally anything that I can use to exchange goods and services with other people is money. Plus, it should have a store value, meaning that if you keep that thing with you for a long period of time, it shouldn't lose its value. For example, using milk as a medium of exchange can serve very difficult as it might get spoiled the other day. Whereas, using goat skin or pots or rice etc. as money is really possible. There are 5 types of money that we will learn. Let us start with commodity money. Commodity money is the oldest of its kind. When humans first started to trade with each other, they exchanged goods for different commodities. Some societies used goat skins to trade with each other, whereas others used seashells, while some societies even used birds feathers as a means of exchange. However, as we discussed earlier, problems of storage, durability, etc made people replace commodity money with metallic money. Metallic money was made during the time of monarchy. However, metallic coins are used till date. Earlier coins were made out of gold, silver, copper, iron, etc. 
the rulers of various kingdom minted these coins with their own seals the seals were the certification of purity metallic coins can be further divided into two parts some coins which are minted have their face value equal to its intrinsic value what this means is say if i have a coin of gold weighing 5 grams and the price for 5 grams of gold is equivalent to 100 kg of rice then the coin weighing 5 grams will only give you 100 kg of rice nothing more thus coins which have face value equal to its intrinsic value are called standard coins or full bodied coins but a recent time currencies which are minted under the seal of government are made out of different metals like aluminium or nickel which are cheap so the cost of aluminium used to make that 5 rupee coin might actually be only 1 rupee however that coin helps you purchase things of up to 5 rupees such coins whose face value is more than intrinsic value are called token coins Nowadays you must have seen people making payments through debit cards and credit cards this is also bank money however as the cards are generally made out of plastic some prefer calling them as plastic money guys you must have surely heard your parents going to bank and depositing a check what is a check every person who is an account holder can take check book from his bank and use it as the means of paying money to whoever he wishes to pay This helps because he need not carry lots of cash with him everywhere. If person A has to make a payment to person B, a payment of rupees five thousand, then all he has to do is give him a check of five thousand, which person B can then deposit into bank. Person A's account gets debited by five thousand, and person B's accounts get credited by five thousand. thus making transaction possible without actually having to pay money in physical form instruments like check hence are called as bank money or credit money last but not the least the money that we all use in our day to day life is paper money across the world people use this money because it is a legal tender This means that if no person wishes to accept these notes from you then the government promises to do so and as everyone trusts the government people readily accept these notes paper money is a substitute to metallic money for two reasons one is that it reduces costs significantly which are high in minting coin second it is easier to print money of higher denominations rather than minting them Central banks have a history of printing currency in different manner. In the earlier days, central banks used to only print that much amount of money as much as they had gold or silver reserves with them. For example, if the central bank had gold worth rupees 50 crore, it was restricted to print money only worth 50 crore. As the money printed represents gold or silver reserves of the central bank such money is called as representative money Nowadays central banks do not print money which has any sort of backing like gold or silver they print money according to their will after looking at proper economic conditions such money is called as fiat money fiat means government order It is obligatory for the people of the country to use this money to buy and sell goods or pay their loans. The limitation that paper currency has is that it has less durability than metallic coins. Another limitation is that paper currency can be easily faked as compared to metallic coins. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did and learned something useful, do share it with your friends. And you know the drill. Like comment share and subscribe until then adios hasta la vista